welcome back to my channel. My name is Sasha. I'm a fourth year medical student and I want to start off by first wishing you a very happy new year. I hope it brings you so much happiness, success and good health your way. So I was actually cleaning up my room because it's new year and as many of us do, we try to be more organized and I was looking through all the books that I bought through medical school, some of which I never really opened. I never even looked at. Part of it is because I never had the time to, and other times you just weren't very helpful, so it was just not very efficient for me. While I was filtering through my books, I ran into the first aid books, which brought so much PTSD and palpitations, but I did think it was valuable for me to compare the first aid, U.S. assembly step one, versus the first aid, U.S. assembly step two CK books. Before I even start to compare both books, I mostly used questions and questions should be your number one tool when you're starting for your boards. You world, you world, you world. I say this in all of my videos because I hold it true. I hold it very valuable. Ask a lot of people that did well. Question taking is what's going to help you do very well in your board examinations. So if you do anything, do a lot of your year old question bank. Now, in terms of the books for reference, the first aid, US only step one, I use the 2019 edition. I love this book. I truly did because when I was starting to do questions, it was not natural for me to not have a reference or a base. I didn't know how to filter out my material. Yes, did I do uh, Anki cards and try to do question switched into Anki flashcards? Yes, I tried that. Did I try writing in documentation into like a Word document? But the way that I grew up studying was having a physical book. Like I needed a reference. Doing questions and having flashcards and a document did not do it in the beginning for me. When I looked at this book, this book brought me so much peace because it was organized. It provided me a platform or a backbone to build something upon it. And in the beginning, yes, did I try to read each chapter? I don't recommend to do that because it was, it was a waste of time. Instead, this might surprise you at first. It might feel very uncomfortable. I felt very uncomfortable when I started to do questions and then trying to refer to this book instead of actually reading each chapter. And I don't recommend that you read each chapter in the beginning because it's not efficient. You're not utilizing your uh, knowledge and applying it to what you need to for your exam. And so it will take a lot of practice. It will take a lot of time to adapt, which is why I start a bit early. And so when you start doing your questions, you're going to find the content in this book and you're gonna go and you're gonna review it and take notes on it. And that's what I ended up doing and I'm gonna show you for example, if you look at the cycle, I know tragic PTSD, you see me highlighted, you see me writing and annotating, but I didn't go through this chapter and just take notes. What I did is that throughout the course of my questions, every single time I got a question, regardless if it's right or wrong, I will have the online PDF uh, for this book and I will control find the chapter in the book and I'll review it and I'll take notes on it. When you do highlight, I recommend you have a strategy. I believe what I did here was that for the blue highlight, I used it as in terms of medications. The green was mostly microorganisms and diagnosis. And then of course the yellow is just something that's important, but bold, uh, big differentials would be the pink highlight color. So it's good to have some sort of organization as you go through. Another thing that really surprised me about this book was that I did Pathoma and I love Pathoma for pathology. I think it's king. But I was really surprised to see that when I went through the pathology chapter, the first aid book did cover things that Pathoma did not. And I also felt very comfortable reading through it and annotating through it because Pathoma just gave me such a good foundation. And when I looked at the pathology section, uh, it was really good. It was really cool to see how it was organized. It was structured well. It had some in images and mnemonics that Pathoma didn't really offer. And so I definitely think that after you do Pathoma, it's a good idea to run through the uh, pathology section. Now, what I'm about to tell you next, I want you to remember me throughout your board preparation. Sketchy Micro and Sketchy Farm, amazing, did wonders, great. But guess what? When I was taking my board exam, I realized that they're testing me on things that Sketchy was not able to cover enough of. When you go through your first eight chapter, they did such a great job, especially in the microbiology section and the farm section. Um, they covered so many things that Sketchy wasn't able to do because it's, of course you can't cover everything in a Sketchy image. And so they really did fill in the gaps that you really needed. I remember there are some pages that came really verbatim from this book. And even physiology wise, I can't give you the information, but 
I will tell you, some things came from the first aid step one, which surprised me. I'm not sure what your background was before starting medical school, but I don't remember taking a heavy farm class, like pharmaceutical or pharmacology class in undergrad. And I was studying for boards. I didn't have enough time to go through a lot of the chapters, but I regret not covering so many different things. There was a chapter that's purely pharmacology in first aid that is so helpful Definitely recommend you read it. Definitely recommend just cover it. Even if you don't have the full chance to study and go through and annotate, when you finish all your question bank and you annotate it as much as you can through your book, just going through a light breeze and just reading and filtering through as much as you can, can help you. Another big thing that a lot of medical students forget about is ethics and statistics. Those two are very heavy, they're high yield please make sure that you're able to go through them. First Aid did cover a lot of important topics on it. If you need more questions, cover your questions, but I think it was very helpful. I thought they did a very good job on the ethics section, as well as the statistics. Boards and Beyond taught me statistics. I learned that through Boards and Beyond, but I did annotate through First Aid because I think he also does a really good job at finding out what's high yield, and you're able to find the content that Boards and Beyond covers in your First Aid book. This will happen when you're studying for your boards. You're going to feel tired. You're going to feel burnt out at some point. And when you start to get questions that you're getting right, you are going to stop reviewing the answers just as much as you were for the questions that you got wrong. I know it's hard for me to advise you this because even when I was in that situation, I also was very fatigued to review them. But I will say that every information that you get is high yield and treat it as such so that you don't lack behind. Don't brush up content because you think they're never going to come up. You'll be very surprised at what shows up and what doesn't. Please don't compare yourself to your peers. It's very hard. I know that you're studying with your classmates or you're, that you're studying alone. And you know, sometimes someone can be very ahead of you. They did all the sketchy videos. That it all of Anki, but maybe that's not you. Maybe you don't study through Sketchy. Maybe you don't study through Anki flashcards, and that's fine. That's okay. As long as you figure out a method that works for you and commit to it and do that over and over again and commit. And that's what you need. It's repetition. It's applying the questions to your content. And whatever way helps you memorize your content best and understand it, go ahead and do that. For example, my best friend and my roommate and my classmate and I, we both have different ways of studying. For pharmacology, she straight out studied all for farm from the book. I could not, I needed sketchy, I needed visuals, I needed something to be more dynamic. And guess what, at the end of the day, we both know our foundation. We just understood it in different ways because that's what works best for each one of us. I really encourage you to find out what works for you early on and commit to it. And whatever you see over and over again, that's how you're going to retain, as long as you expose yourself to that information. Embryology, I know it's hard. Don't forget your anatomy. There is something called, I think, Sketchy Anatomist, somewhere online. I'm not sure where it was, but do not forget your anatomy, at least the high yield ones. And there are many references and online resources for that, but I think a lot of people don't spend time, enough time, I would say, on women's health, ob embryology. I think every chapter in this book after you have done your questions and you have annotated, you will begin to notice that verbatim your world has tested things on the smallest details of some pages. This is just to show you how detailed things can be. Sometimes you collect a picture and you don't know what's important, but once you do questions and you go back to take notes on them, you're gonna notice that a lot of things that I have highlighted and wrote things on is because of questions that I have received and if I were to read this without doing my questions, I would not know what's important and what's not, and I would have just skipped it. Conclusion, the first HUS Only Step 1 book was such a great book, very helpful, but of course, this is your reference, so you're doing your questions, and you're using this as a guide to help with your thoughts and your organization, and to annotate through this book, and then you look over it and review it at night as you come closer to your exam. Now we're gonna move on to the first HUSMLE Step 2 CK book, just for comparison. So back before it was pass fail, step one used to be uh, highly valued in terms of your residency programs and when you apply to those competitive specialties. But now that step one is going to be pass fail, step two still has a score. So a lot of us are thinking that that's going to be weighed a lot higher than what it used to be. I don't know where to start when I think about this book. I felt very shocked and disappointed 
It was like the final episodes of Game of Thrones. I thought step one was such a great book. And so I walked in thinking I have everything I need while doing my year old for step two. And it didn't work that way. While studying for my shelf examinations, I'm doing questions and I realized I'm trying to find reference in this book and not everything was in it. I realized that at some point this wasn't helping. I remember my pediatric shelf. I thought I did everything and I annotated everything and I did every question, but this book really didn't help me at all, not for my shelves and not for my final exam. It's very empty and clean of annotations compared to my first aid part one book that I showed you. Sasha, you're telling us that step two is now more valuable than step one. And now what resources do we have? We no longer have Pathoma, we don't have Boards and Beyond, we don't have Sketchy, we don't have nothing. So what do we do? You world, all you need, and I know it takes a lot of faith and you need, you need that leap of faith. All you need is you world. Once you finish step one, once you went through the process, doing your step two questions, that's all you need. You open up either a Google document or you make flashcards depending on what you like and you literally just do questions, questions, questions because in the end of the day, the year old bank, it's its own book. It, it is its own reference, believe it or not. If you haven't learned that after studying for step one, Step two, you just have to have your full faith and do your full year old question bank. And if you run out of it, either repeat it again and start to do other questions. There's also Amboss that it helped a lot of people. I tried doing some questions. I found it very helpful as well, but I would still focus on year old and finish that deck and sorry, finish that year old bank before moving on to something else. That being said, great book. Definitely recommend it. Make sure you're doing your year old questions and utilizing this as your reference guide to help you through it. I don't know what happened with this one. I don't recommend it. Personally, it didn't work for me. If it works for you, great. I just think it was a waste of time. Just do a lot of your year old questions. Trust the process. A valuable person to me looked at me and told me that you are a question-based learner. And I didn't believe it until after I scored well. Step two, do your questions, trust the process, take notes on a Google Doc or Anki and review those and you'll be fine. Good luck, let me know how I can help on the next videos and I wish you a very happy new year. Take care.